Armored Core, a video game I didn't think I was actually going to check out from, from software. That one video game that no one seems to really have played from, from software's older titles. I kind of want to just talk about what I loved about this series and why I think it has a little special place in my heart now. I'm a big From Software fan, to say the least. I played all their Souls games, all of their Souls likes, any of the stuff that they've made. Obviously not their very obscure titles that are from the past, I definitely haven't played those. But I started my journey with From Software's video games when they made Dark Souls 1. And that was the first introduction I did to the whole from software formula and design. I love the video games. It's a series that I hold very dearly to my heart and I absolutely love and adore everything that From Software makes in their video games. The Soul series are known to being very difficult and arduous adventures that you can take in any form of video game. But it's that difficulty that have made the Soul series stand out. But there's also great world design, lore, combat, environments, levels, and just overall video game design. It's just a fun video game you can always come back to try something different and get you know different types of endings but this video isn't about the soul series obviously it's about armored core hell i didn't even know from software even made video games before the soul series so since armored core 6 got announced i've been having this itch to play all the other Armored Core games just to see, you know, what the video game is about and see exactly what people think about them. I've heard mixed opinions on them. People don't like the mech type of games. You know, it's a very older type of style video game that really died out in like the mid 2000s. I remember playing like other mech type games in arcades and stuff. I never really played a actual mech game or owned one on my own. I only played them in arcades, but every time I did, I enjoyed something out of it. It was just a type of game you just turn your brain off to and become like a big robot destroying everything in sight. It, you know, it's just fun. Just overall fun as, as an actual game. But Armored Core kind of stands out to me. It's a video game definitely from its time, especially the PS1 titles. Oh god, don't, don't even get me started with the PS1 titles. They are fun actually. Well, Fun at the cost of really shit controls. Obviously, you got no analog support, and the PS1's a notorious D-pad uh, is just the worst thing known to man to controlling a fucking mech. But somehow it works. Once you get through that stuff, you can obviously emulate the game, you know, or play it legit if you want to get a real copy. Honestly, I, I kind of had to uh, play it emulated because there's no fucking way I'm going to get a PS1 and play this game. But if you got a, if you got the option for that, go for it, you know be my guest but yeah the ac1 titles were pretty cool um i think it goes ac1 to project phantasma and then masters of arena um all three of the games kind of play similarly i mean they're very basic you kind of go into missions destroy shit these games are kind of like how armored core basically works in itself you just get a mech you customize it um, you're kind of like the pilot who gets to you know craft their mech to their liking and you just go on missions you're kind of like a mercenary and you work for some corporations or you work for yourself. I, I There's a lot of stuff about the story, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. If you really want to know more about the Armored Core story, I definitely suggest going and actually researching about the, the actual lore itself because it's, it's pretty expansive and uh, there's a lot of games to cover and this is not what this video is about. <laughs> so the gist of it is that you're a pilot inside of your Armored Core, which is a mech that you kind of control and customize to um, adapt to how you want to do your play style. So there's a lot of replayability and, and um, options for you, for you to do other runs when you complete the game so i gotta give some credit there for the weapon variety and the type of customization you can do with your mech it's really fun you can really you know experiment and make some abominations and i, I truly mean that you can make some really really horrendous but pretty cool mechs armor core games are kind of more renowned for their deep and extensive mech customization options just like in the soul series there's usually two weapon types in these games which is energy and regular you know am ammunition uh, you can do like explosives you can get a bazooka gatling gun uh, you can get a plasma rifle or energy rifle. There's a lot of stuff and you kind of have to like work with your uh, mech in a way where you have to make sure you're managing enough energy inside of it. Yeah, and also you don't get overweight because holy shit, I don't know why FromSoft has this issue with their fucking video games of being overweight, but it, it still plagues the Armed Core series. And um, you will feel it in this game. If you don't know the stats, you don't know what the fuck you're doing, look up a guide. It's gonna, it's gonna help you in the long run. Trust me, you're gonna run into a wall and you're gonna hate yourself for not trying to prepare yourself accordingly to adapt to the video game just like you would with, with the Soul series. So yeah, you can really customize your 
armored core to a lot of stuff and make it like your own i mean there's some really cool customization in ac1 actually i think it has some of the best armored core uh customization out of all the games surprisingly as a ps1 game so yeah just fuck around with the uh, character customization or the core or armored core customization and have fun with it make a wacky ass like tumor if you want I, I don't care just try something as you get further into the game series around like gen 2 gen 3 it gets a little there's there's a bit of a difficulty spike i would say armored core 2 on its expansion is kind of like where you get tested if you really would enjoy the series that's where they start upping the difficulty a bit so the further along you get with the games you kind of start developing like a sense of what you're gonna build uh towards like the the next installment like you know what you're gonna be doing because you can transfer your saves from in between the gen gens of game like you can't go from gen 1 to gen 2 which is like armored core 1 to armored core 2 it just won't work like that but you can do your armored core 2 save transfer it to the next expansion and uh kind of go from there and then you can kind of work your way through the games like that so i made a tier list here this is my tier list this is how it's gonna go so yeah, like I was saying, Gen 2 difficulty is kind of challenging. Game length is around six hours. Uh, there's a, there's a difficulty spike for sure. It's, it's still a fun game overall. I think it's one of the better Armored Cores. If you enjoyed Armored Core 2, you're going to enjoy the rest of the series. There's just no doubt about it. Because if you got through the PS1 era, you, you are just like me for real you you legit just like to torture yourself through the difficult level design and fucking horrid horrid jumping in that game and turning holy shit fuck that game so once you're done with our ac2 you're going to ac2 another age and uh, let me tell you this game is the biggest piece of dog shit it fucking sucks i don't care if people like this game even if you like ac2 this game is way too long has the most missions out of all all the series it's like almost like a hundred ish missions some ridiculous fucking number I, I didn't even play all through it i got through like 40 missions and i said i'm good i don't need to play this shit so yeah it's kind of tedious um still a piece of dog shit don't like it but uh you know to everyone's preference i guess and then you get to the gen 3 of games which is Armored Core 3, baby. This is my fucking bread and butter. I love this game. This game is such a breath of fresh air going into, um, you know, the midway of the PS2 cycle of, of Armored Core games. They feel, I feel like they got everything right in here. You know, it's it's not it's not difficult. It's easy. I would suggest this is the first game people get into, especially if they want to play Armored Core. Just go straight on to 3. Uh, you can play the other ones if you want, but 3 is really where you can start off and just be good and understand the mechanics and how to build your mech and just know, like, every ins and out of how the games work. Yeah, it's my Guiding Moonlight. Favorite AC. Easy. Easy and fun mech combat and levels. And obviously, you get analog support, so, I mean, what is in there to love? Analog support is fucking peak. Thank God you don't have to use the D-pad on this fucking game because if you did it's the worst piece of dog shit trust me don't play with a d-pad so yeah once you beat once you beat uh armored core 3 then you'll go on to silent line uh i it's kind of hard i would say it's kind of medium it's in between like hard and medium um difficulty spikes for sure but manageable if you transfer from ac3 uh, that's kind of like where your saves you know keep going and transferring over it's, it's the best it's one of the cooler parts of, of the series you can just save your mech transfer it to another game and boom you're you're good to start because trust me a lot of these games they're gonna start you off with some dookie armor and dookie weapons do not use them they are they are literally garbage don't use them you want to buy everything and upgrade as soon as you can with your money and you can also go into debt too there's a cool little mechanic that that they introduce in these games where if you go into debt you actually make the game easier for yourself so you can try doing that i think it's called human plus if you go through that then the game is like 10 times easier so i would suggest that for sure for the first games and now we go to gen 3.5 this is kind of like the end of the ps2 era but these games are a little i would say they're a little i mean no they're fucking hard these games are hard you're gonna you're gonna get fucking destroyed difficulty i would say is hard for armor core nexus which is the next game after uh sound line i kind of wrote here um try finger then butthole you're gonna get fucked you're absolutely gonna get fucked in this game uh the final boss will end you unless you cheese with an orbital cannon or something yeah overall okay uh some levels are aids though for sure um i think nine ball was in this game if he's i think he's at the end of it nine ball is also another cool character that kind of appears and and uh, always comes back in this series of games so it's kind of funny and kind of cool also kind of cringe because he fucking hurts but uh anyways nexus definitely a uh, harder type of game wouldn't recommend it for your first game i think this is one this game had some of the worst uh generators in all of them so very tough very tough yeah good luck with your energy uh, consumption on this game fuck fuck this game and then you get armored core nine breaker um this game's kind of easy um surprisingly um it's more like a arena uh type game it's not really a story it's literally like a skippable arena mode so uh i guess you can try it i, I didn't really care i played I, I killed like one mech in there and i was like i'm good there's no story so there's no point point. and then we get on to armored core <laughs> last raven Oh my god, this game is fucking horrible. Uh, at least it's short. Difficult as balls, though. This is this is probably one of the most difficult games in the whole entire Armored Core catalog. Don't start off with this game. Play it with cheats. If you don't have cheats, 
uh, good luck. This game will fucking destroy you. And uh, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, fuck this game and fuck the ACs in it. Armored Core Project Phantasma is cancer. Um, very short game, at least it's not too long. But uh, yeah, the final boss in this game is actual AIDS. Do not play this game without cheats. That's my suggestion. Same thing with uh, Masters Arena. Just just play with cheats. Trust me. Just play with cheats or Human Plus. And uh, yeah, good luck. There, there is some cancer in these games, and uh, it suffers from that horrible level one design where you get to like fly away and fly through shit and go through dog shit missions, and there's a lot of jank in there, especially being from the PS1 era. So expect that. Um, yeah, good luck. And now we move on to Gen 4, Armored Core 4. The games finally move on to the Xbox. The previous ones were just PlayStation exclusive titles, but then they moved on to being uh, multi-platform after this. This game is literally peak. It has the best movement, super fun. Quick thrust is so fucking cool, and you literally can go as fast as possible. In it. It's literally being a ginormous machine going at like Mach 10, and it's so fun. And you just destroy everything in sight and destroy cool machines and cool levels. And uh, yeah, it's just an overall fun game. But I do think that its sequel does make everything about it better somehow it's so fun and super intuitive and, and there's the level design and just mech customization and just movement just fluid just like i was in four. Oh, and fun fact miyazaki was actually the director of these two games which makes a peak already i think i think these were his first armor core games he actually directed i think last raven he was like a an assistant on something but he wasn't like officially like a director so yeah he got some experience there but definitely four and four answer are some of the best armor core titles not only because they're fun but because miyazaki is behind them miyazaki doesn't miss you guys know this miyazaki does not miss so yeah you're gonna enjoy some super fast combat and fun explosions and fun weapons and just a lot of cool weapon variety you can do here and there's there's multiple endings and uh yeah it's literally it literally it's like uh it, it's it's armored core at its peak in the in the newer gen of games i wouldn't say it's super new because it's on the 360 era and uh uh, yeah, it definitely looks like a 360 game, but uh, it's definitely better than five. We, we don't we don't talk about five. Trust me, we do not talk about fucking Armored Core Five. Dog shit. Don't play this game. This game sucks. I don't know why people defend this game to this day. This game definitely is more multiplayer focused. Uh, Miyazaki wasn't even on this game, so. I mean, I know Miyazaki wasn't on the previous games, but at least the previous games were fun. Whatever fucking team got to work on 5 and Verdict Day, dog shit, don't play these games. They suck. Everything that was fun about Armored Core, they got rid of it. You like to uh, go fast? Yeah, guess what? Go fuck yourself. You want to go uh, high in the sky? Yeah, guess what? Your Armored Core can only lift off like 10 feet in the air. Fuck you. And we don't know why they did it, but they did it. I, I don't know why they decided to remove all the fun stuff about Armored Core in, in these two games. Fuck these games. Don't play them. Honestly, just, I mean, you could play them. I doubt you're going to enjoy them. If you enjoy them, you're fucking weird. Sorry. But yeah, that's basically my Armor Core experience in a nutshell. Fun games. Very fun games. You will die, though. You will. It is a From Software game. You will die. There's no doubt about that. That's basically my experience with these video games. I love them. I love them all. Except 5 and, and Verdict Day. Fuck those games. Those games should not exist. If there's a video game that shouldn't exist, it's those two. Alright? Those two video games right there. Fuck those games. I don't care. You can defend it. Defend it in the comments. I don't care. They're dog shit. And if you do try to defend 5 and Verdict Day for their multiplayer shit, cool, I guess. They're still dog shit because their single player sucks. Anyways, yeah. Armored Core, just like the Souls games, emphasizes a skill-based gameplay, such as maneuvering your mech for more finesse and timing. You're obviously going to learn your, your opponent ACs and you're going to dodge their attacks. You're going to find the timing and stuff. So there's a lot of like intricacy in there and then you'll find your openings to strike once you're done destroying them and going all balls to the wall against your your acs or just enemies in general you're just gonna have such a fun fun time and there's definitely challenge and a sense of accomplishment which resonates with soul players like myself so you're gonna enjoy it mastering all the difficult mechanics another fun thing too is that there's boss fights in these games some of these boss fights are bullshit but some of them are kind of cheesy you can just cheese them real easy if you got a good build but uh there are be there there will be times where you will get destroyed and you will question every single decision you have made up to that point about how you designed your mech and if you don't know what's going on good luck because sometimes searching for um, build advice and just stuff in general about armor core is kind of obscure on the internet you'll find forums from like 12 years ago giving you your best bet so I'll start from there you're not playing armor core unless you change your build to face a boss or an AC trust me you haven't played the game until you've done that so yeah enjoy it it's part of the 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 experience of playing armored core there's also secrets in in armored core where you can find like the actual moonlight sword and it's an actual weapon you can use pretty cool little easter egg there's also patches i think in four answer you can meet uh he's pretty cool so 
the original patches in the Armored Core game, so kind of kind of sick if you ask me. But yeah, you also will find secret areas. You're, I mean, you're not gonna find like a hidden wall or something. I mean, you kind of will, but you kind of break them. You don't kind of go through them in phase. You know how you do in the Souls games. Yeah, you understand. You'll find secret weapons and components you can find, and and sometimes they're really OP. So definitely look out for them in the video games. A lot of the levels are linear, but you can have multiple paths and hidden areas and secrets to uncover um, in certain titles. The later titles are definitely more uh, free on that. You they're more open, but they're, they're still linear in some way. But at least you have some openness to it, so you can attack in any in any way or shape or form you want to. I, I just love the dystopian future that Armored Core is set in. You find these art these giant armored cores that are just like the size of like buildings, and they're just so cool to look at. And if they actually existed in real life, I would actually shit my pants because they are they are so fast and quick and, and ginormous and literally can deal death on like a mass scale. So they would actually be terrifying, but kind of cool to look at uh, if they were real. But uh, yeah, hopefully they do exist somewhere. If, if, if we can get like a mech or even like a Gundam, a mech, or just anything out in the real world, sick. But yeah, anyways, design on point from software and cooking like they always do. The world is often depicted gritty, desolate, war torn. You know, you get that, you get that soul, you get that soulless feeling, um, or you get that souls like feeling of, of, a, of a world, hopelessness and despair. So yeah, you'll, you'll find, you'll find some similarities to it like that. So yeah, the armored cores in, in of themselves are the central characters of the game and including the, the overall world design of, of these video games. Um, definitely the environmental storytelling is one of the big parts. You'll, you'll definitely be in missions where you see just total death and destruction uh, in front of you, or you'll be sneaking behind enemy lines, destroying stuff, protecting this, uh, protecting cargo, protecting a train, attacking a train, destroying a ship. So yeah, you'll be able to piece together narrative by paying attention and just, you know, paying attention to your surroundings, which is cool. The, the world of Armored Core is definitely rich with its own lore, factions, and political intrigue. So yeah, piecing together narratives and uncovering, you know, the deeper story elements can be just as engaging as, as it was in the Soul series. Another great thing I loved is the community interaction with the Armored Core games. I obviously searched up a lot of things on Google and try to figure out how to play these games, how to get my best build, or how to get optimized. I had a question about, oh, what does this stat do, or what does that do? I just looked it up online. There's a lot of helpful people out there, or helpful videos that you can find, and people are are there to help you. That's what I love about the Souls community, and just from software fans in general, they're there to help you. I was literally there as well, if you're just starting with, with your Armored Core experience, so... Don't be ashamed to search up uh, a problem or issue you're having with these games. It's it's encouraged, actually. I'm pretty sure they designed the video game that way so you can actually, you know, form a community. And lastly, I just want to say that Armored Core, just like Souls, definitely has that progression and difficulty curve that it's known for. Just stick to it. Stick with your mechs. You know, try things out. These mech games are very fun, and Armored Core is definitely a series that's worth checking out. So you'll get a bunch of replayability out of these games, especially if you can come back with um, all your upgrades and stuff and go through all the missions again. Or you can even go through some hard mode uh, versions and some of the other and some of the other titles that offer it. And you can always get a different experience every time you play these video games. So there's definitely that. So yeah, that's basically Armored Core. Definitely give this game a try. It's super fun, especially with Armored Core 6 around the corner. I'm going to have so much fun with that video game for sure. I would suggest that you try one of these Armored Core games before you go into 6 just to get a feel of it, see how the game's going to play, see if it's for you or not. And um, there's literally no no hurt in trying, honestly. If you're a fan of From Software, I mean, you might enjoy the Armored Core games just as much as you enjoy the Souls games. So I hope Armored Core uh, is here to stay, especially mech games in general. I think we still need some of these video games in the modern era. I think they're definitely a relic of the past because there's you don't really see these games anymore. So, so it's really cool to see what these type of video games can look like in the modern day, especially the mech game that one of our most beloved video game companies have, have made from software. This video is just to showcase what Armored Core is all about, what I love from it, what I took from it, and what I learned from playing these older titles from, from software. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like down below. I'd greatly appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, and as always guys, take care and peace.